So I have a rational expression here. And what my goal is is to simplify it. But while I simplify it, I want to make the simplified expression be algebraically equivalent. So if there are certain x values that would make this thing undefined, then I have to restrict my simplified expression by those x values. So you could pause this video and take a go at it, and then we'll do it together. All right. So let's just think real quick, what, would, what x values would make this expression undefined? Well, it's undefined if we try to divide by 0. So if x is 0, 14 times 0 is 0, it's going to be undefined. And so we could say, we could say this is, we could say x does not, cannot be equal to 0. For any other x, we can evaluate this expression. Now let's actually try to simplify it. So when you look at the numerator and the denominator, every term we see is divisible by x. And every term is divisible by 7. So it looks like we can factor a 7x out of the numerator and a 7x out of the denominator. So the numerator we can rewrite as 7x times, if you factor a 7x out of 14x squared, you're going to be left with a 2x. And then you factor a 7x out of 7x, you're going to be left with a 1. And one way to think about it is we did the distribu distributive property in reverse. If you were to do it again, 7x times 2x is 14x squared. 7x times 1 is 7x. All right, and now let's factor 7x out of the denominator. So 14x could be rewritten as 7x times 2, times 2. And remember, I want to keep this algebraically equivalent. So I want to keep the constraint that x cannot be equal to 0. And so we divide the numerator and the denominator by 7x. Or you, one way to think about it, you could divide 7x by 7x and just get 1. And we are left with 2x plus 1 over 2. Now, if this was the original expression, x could take on any value. But if we want it to be algebraically equivalent to our original expression, it has to have the same constraints on it. So we're going to have to say x x does not equal 0. And this is a real it's a very subtle but really important thing. For example, if you defined a function by this right over here, the domain of the function could not include 0. And so if you simplified how you how you define that function to this, if you want that function to be the same, it needs to have the same domain. It has to be defined for the same inputs. And so that's why we're putting the exact same constraints for them to be equivalent. If you got rid of this constraint, these, these two would be equivalent everywhere except for x equals 0. This one would have been defined for x equals 0. This one would not have. And so they wouldn't have been algebraically equivalent. This makes them algebraically equivalent. And of course, you could write this in different ways. You could divide each of these terms by 2 if you like. So you could divide 2x by 2 and get x, and then divide 1 by 2 and get 1 half. But once again, we would want to keep the x cannot be equal to 0. Let's do another one of these. So it's a slightly hairier expression, but let's do the same drill. Let's see if we could simplify it. But as we simplify it, we really want to be conscientious of, of restricting the z's here so that we get an algebraically equivalent expression. So let's think about where this is undefined. We could think about where it's undefined by factoring the denominator here. And actually, let me just, so this is going to be equal to, actually, let me just, let me just do the first step where I could see, well, what's a common factor in the numerator and the denominator? Every term here is divided by z squared, and every term is also divided by 17. So it looks like 17 z squared can be factored out. So 17 z squared can be factored out of the numerator, and then we would be left with, you factor out a 17 z squared out of 17 z to the third, and you're going to be left with just a z. 17z squared, you factor a 17z squared out of that, you're going to be left with just a 1. And once again, you can, you can distribute the 17z squared, multiply it times z, you get 17z to the third. 17z squared times 1 is 17z squared. All right. All of that is going to be over. We want to factor out a 17z squared out of the denominator. 17z squared times. And so 34z to the third divided by 17z squared. 34 divided by 17 is 2. And z to the third divided by z squared is z. And then we have minus 51 divided by 17 is 3. And z squared divided by z squared is just 1. So we'll just leave it like that. And so over here, it becomes a little bit clearer of, well, one, how we're going to simplify it. We're just going to divide 17z squared by 17z squared. But let's be careful to restrict the domain here. 
So we can tell if z is equal to zero, then this, then 17z squared is going to be equal to zero. It would make the denominator equal to zero. And we could see that even looking here. So we could say z cannot be equal to zero. And what else? Z cannot be equal to whatever makes this 2z minus 3 equal zero. So let's think about what makes 2z minus 3 equal to zero. 2z minus 3 is equal to zero. You can add 3 to both sides, and you would get 2z is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 2, and you would get z is equal to 3 halves. So z cannot be equal to 0, and z cannot be equal to 3 halves. So that's how we're going to restrict our domain. But now let's simplify. So if we simplify it, these two cancel out, and we are going to be left with we're going to be left with z plus 1 over 2z minus 3. And we want to keep that constraint. z, z cannot be equal to 0. And actually, this second constraint is redundant because we still have the 2z minus 3 here. Someone were to just look at this expression, they're like, well, the denominator can't be equal to 0, and so z cannot be equal to 3 halves. So this is still, if we just left it the way it is, if we, we don't even have to rewrite this, that would be redundant since looking at this expression, it's clearly not defined for z equals 3 halves. So uh, there you go. If someone asks you for what values is this expression not defined, well then you could you would also include that. Actually, let me just write it. It doesn't hurt to be redundant. Z does not equal three halves. But this this constraint right here is really important because it's not obvious by looking at this expression. This expression by itself would be defined for z equals zero. But if we wanted to be algebraically equivalent to this one and that one, it has to be constrained in the same in the same way.